Hey guys, welcome back. And in this episode of making a 2D platformer in Unity, I'm going to be covering making our player and adding a move and jump script to it. So first things first, we're going to need to get our resources. So come over here to the Retro Chicken. And all you want to do is go over to Resources. And if you come down here, just go to Characters. And if you scroll down and find Forest Platformer, click on that. What you can do is add to cart, hit checkout. And I already added it to my cart, but normally you'll do add to cart and then click checkout. And it'll say the total is $2. But if you come over here where it says a discount code, click enter. And what you want to type in is RC Tut P 2D E. Two, which just stands for Retro Chicken Tutorial Platformer 2D Episode 2. And click Apply. And it will remove 100% of the cost. So you guys can download those assets for free. And that's what we'll be using in our video. So go ahead and get those. And I'll have that discount code in the description. And I'll probably put an annotation on it too. So once you get those, drag them into Unity. All you have to do is just drag and drop the file. And so you should have a background sprite sheet and a character sprite sheet. Now what you want to do for both of these is come over here and by default it will say it's single right here in the sprite mode. Change that to multiple and where it says filter mode by default it's bilinear and change it to point and hit reply, apply. I've already done this so it already has that for me. And then what you want to do is click on sprite editor and it will bring up the sprite sheet. You can zoom in and what we're going to be doing is just selecting, we're not going to do animations this video, so just select a random character, I'm doing king, so just drag a box with your mouse and make it fit exactly the size of the king. And so once you do that, just get that and hit apply. Normally we're going to be having to select all this individual sprites, but for now just get one of them. And come over here to background make sure you change the same thing multiple and point and hit sprite editor what you want to do is I've already done it but come up here just drag a box around this grass tile or dirt tile uh, stone tile any of the ones you want and drag a box around it and then what we want to do is come over here click this little arrow by the character sprite sheet and it'll bring up the sprites you dragged and selected I did four of them I only told you to do one you only need to do one and what you want to do is just get it and drag one in right here. If you go over here, it'll give you the coordinates. Just zero it out. And what we want to do is right now, if you go to game view, look how tiny it is. So come over here and change the scale to 10 for each of these. And you can just leave ZB because Z is kind of like the thickness, but it's a 2D image. So there is no thickness no matter what you change that to. And 10 looks good, so we'll keep it at that. What you want to do is drag the main camera under the platformer character. So therefore, whenever you move this character, the camera will follow it. So it's always in your frame of view. What we want to do is click Add Component and type in Player Move. And it will prompt you to add a new script. Click New Script and make sure the language is C Sharp, not JavaScript. So click that C Sharp, Create and Add. Now double click it to open it in Mono Develop. And that will take a little bit of time to start up. So now once you've got this open, you'll mono develop. And all you need to do is you can delete this start, but keep update. And then what we want to do is do a public float move speed. And the float, for those of you who haven't programmed before, a float is basically a, a number, but it can contain anything like any number with decimals so if you have an integer that would just be numbers like one two three negative five all the uh, just normal integers but float can have decimal decimals so that's what we want for move speed and then public bool facing right which we won't be using in this tutorial but we'll need it later and a bool is just a value that can store as either true or false and then come down here public float jump height and public 
Uh, well, let's actually make this private. In private and public, the only difference is that public uh, variables can be referenced by any script, and private uh, variables can only be referenced by that script. And this won't need to be referenced by any other script, so make it private. And what we need to do is come over here and update and type vector3 move. Now vector3 is just a array of three variables. And so new vector3 and we're going to do input dot get axis and we're going to do horizontal make sure you spell that right and then we're gonna do zero comma zero and close it off with parentheses and every line of code ends with this little semicolon so just type a semicolon there and then what we want to say is the transform dot position is plus equal to which means it's transform dot position plus the new value value on the other side so we want to do move times move speed times time dot delta time and close that off with brackets then we say if and this is saying if we press down the key and we press space and we gotta be grounded which means we are grounded so our player is on the ground and make that and we do get component and we do rigid body 2d and a lot of this we have it I'll, I'll go over the script piece by piece once we type it all in because a lot of this stuff that I'm referencing in the script will have to add into the game but I'll go over that so you guys can understand it right now we're just getting the script in so rigid body 2d dot add force and we want our force to be a new vector 2 and we want it to be 0 comma jump height and then close that off and we're gonna do force mode 2d dot force and close that off with a semicolon okay so now you can see over here we reference the is grounded variable but this variable is never changed anywhere in the script so what we want to do down here is we're going to do void on trigger enter and then 2d since we're making a 2d game and what we want to say is is grounded equals true and I'll explain this in just a second and just go ahead and copy this and paste it down here and change enter to stay and paste it once more and change enter to exit and change true to false so now if we save this it should be working but we have to add a few components to our game so if we do this and no errors okay we're good Which we, what we want to do is add a 2d box collider add that and it covers exactly the size of our player which is good and we want to do another box collider and what we want to do is make sure you click is trigger okay and on our y offset do negative 0 0.01 and as you can see there's a little space in between it and that's good that's what we want and then add a component rigidbody 2d okay now that we have all that our script should work but since we added this rigidbody it's basically giving our player mass so if we play right now our player would just fall into nowhere so what we need to do is come over here to background we're gonna grab that little piece I told you to highlight in the sprite editor so come up get that and change its scale to 10 on each of them just like we did to player so we can keep our proportions right and what we want to do is add a component and do 2d box collider and just keep it as is so now if we do play hopefully we'll have no errors right now with the arrow key up oh, we already got an error so let's see here okay it's a simple error basically all that happened is in the move script we added a move speed but when it's equal to zero if you come in here we you can see that we multiplied it by the move speed 
So by multiplying it by move speed, which was zero, it just sums up the entire thing to zero. So let's just change that to two. And while we're at it, let's change our jump height to 300. Okay, and let's hit start. So now with our arrow keys, we can move. Right now there's no animations, but that's fine. I'm saving that for another video. And if we press space, you jump. And as you can see, you can only jump once, and you can only jump again once you've hit the ground. And I'll show you guys how this works. If we come in here, what it's showing us is on the first part of update, an update is a standard void by unity which is called every frame of the video game. We have a vector 3 move which is a three variable uh, array and what it's basically doing is the position of our character is also stored in a 3D array which is the X value, the Y value, and the Z value, a set of coordinates, right? So we add to that va those values our move which is the our horizontal axis and a horizontal axis is either one if we're pressing the right arrow key and it's negative one if we're pressing the left arrow key so it's uh, one times move speed which is one or two actually sorry so times two times the change in time so that's basically just adding up basically you move farther based on how long you've held it down and depending on which arrow key you're pressing it changes the direction and over here if we press space and then it checks if we're grounded so are we on the ground or are we not and if we are on the ground and we press space then it's going to add a, a force an upward force to our character and then we'll come back down because of gravity and these just on trigger ex enter and exit and stay these alter the ground variable and as you can see here when we click on this the if you look right here the box like yeah this one you see the is trigger Basically it's saying whenever this box collider interferes with another object with a collider, then it'll send a message to the script that we have just entered another collider. And basically if we enter another collider with that little bit of offset right there, that little space right there, that means it will have hit the ground in that tiny little space, which means we will have entered the ground. So grounded is true. If we're staying on the ground, grounding is true. And if we exit the ground, grounding is false. Okay, from here, all you guys got to do is uh, you can set up the terrain however you want. All that you have to do is make sure whenever you do ground, let's look here. All you have to do with ground is make sure you add a box collider. Anything else that you don't want your character to uh, be able to walk through, you have to add a box collider. So if you want them to walk through it, don't add a box collider. If you do want them to if you don't want them to walk through add a box slide so just have fun use the sprite sheet and just do sprite editor and crop out any sprites you want and then just drag them onto the game and you can set up your terrain however you want and drop a comment if you have any errors or have anything you'd want me to clarify and until then stay tuned subscribe like and see you guys next time